Victoria's Great Ocean Road leads the traveller through 240 kilometres of spectacular coastal scenery. It is dotted with beautiful beaches and rugged cliffs that occasionally give way to the small coastal villages that nestle at the foot of the mountains where lush green rainforests flourish. It is difficult, therefore, to imagine that such beauty could be associated with so much death and destruction, for this is a hungry sea that has an insatiable appetite for the land and for those who choose to challenge its dominion. The last section of the Great Ocean Road is called the Shipwreck Coast as a reminder of all those who have battled with the sea and lost. The first evidence of the sea's awesome power is at the Twelve Apostles. Why it was called that is a bit of a mystery, as there were never twelve in the immediate area. Only seven rock shafts were ever visible in one direction from the lookout. And six months after this footage was taken, the shaft immediately in front of the lookout collapsed, now making it only six. Two groups will be asking for a discount. With the sea constantly eating away at their soft limestone bases, eventually they all will go. But for now, it is still a fascinating sight and very popular with visitors. The setting sun draws the biggest crowds and everyone has a camera to get that special shot. Further along the road we come to Lockhart Gorge, the scene of one of Victoria's most infamous shipwrecks. The Lockhart was an ironclad clipper with 54 people on board on the last lap of a three-month voyage from England to Melbourne in 1878. It was well known that this last section was the most treacherous and it was referred to as threading the needle as the ships all had to pass through a narrow passage between King Island in Bass Strait and the high coastal cliffs of Cape Otway on the mainland. There was little margin for error and it is thought that a faulty compass put the Lockhart 45 kilometres off her course. It may not have ended so tragically if the land had not lay hidden beneath a blanket of fog. She hit the rocks at Mutton Bay on and began to break up almost immediately. Of the 54 on board, only two survived. A young crewman named Tom Pierce was washed into the gorge under an upturned lifeboat and 18-year-old Eva Carmichael was also washed into the gorge and rescued by Tom. Eva lost all seven members of her family that she was travelling with. Together with her surviving brother William in England, they erected this memorial on the ridge above the gorge. One item from the ship's cargo that survived, however, was a life-size porcelain peacock that was destined for the Melbourne Exposition of 1880. It seems incredible that the sea that had the power to smash a huge sailing ship and all it contained should spare this one exquisite fragile creation. It can be seen today on display in the museum at Flagstaff Hill, Warrnambool. 
More than 180 ships were wrecked along this section of the coast, with a further 100 being wrecked on nearby King Island. Which leads one to the conclusion that travel was extremely hazardous in those days. Today, however, the shipwreck coast is admired for its strange beauty and its numerous rock shafts. This particular formation is known as London Bridge and was linked to the land until January 1990 when, like its English namesake, the bridge part collapsed, stranding two tourists who were later rescued by helicopter. So for now, we take our pictures and admire the scenery, for like the wrecks, all the rock shafts will one day be devoured by the hungry sea.